Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. Way back in the day, when the role-playing game was young, there was a strange phenomenon. Different game companies in the budding industry produced charismatic figures who innovated, and a cult of personality grew up around them. Among these rock star game designers were Dave Arneson, Gary Gygax, Steve Jackson, Kevin Simbita, and eventually Mark Reinhagen. One day, that culture just kinda ended. For more than a decade, there were no new names that everyone just knew. Then, along came Monty Cook. Out of nowhere, he was tapped to give the comatose and nearly expired body of Dungeons & Dragons 20 cc's of stop sucking it. For a while there, everything Monty touched just turned to gold. Now he's back with a new design company and a new game. Will it live up to the hype, like 3.5? Or is it another Monty Cook's World of Darkness? Let's take a look at Numenera by Monty Cook Games. Alrighty, welcome to the game. Hand over those character sheets. Tell me a bit about yourself. I'm a stealthy jack who murders. I made a name for myself conquering the small tribe that birthed me. It was fun, but I wasn't happy with so few subjects. They call me Nuklar, Lord of the Scalers. I'm a mystical nano who bears a halo of flame. I come from a long line of mages feared for our pyrokinetic abilities. I set out to spread the fame of my family and to make a name for myself. I'm Scarlet Orchid, 12th of my line. I'm a strong glaive that howls at the moon. Oh, oh it's I like the Ralph Wiggum. Oh, ever. what's wrong with my bill? What's wrong with your bill? What a rube. It only works a few days out of the month, and then you're just as likely to kill us as you are our enemies. Yeah, that's a sucker's bill. They're usually a total XP leech, and then a walking TPK when it's the time of the month. Yeah, but only to start. Think of it this way. I'm an investment. A wizard is an investment. No. You are a liability. Yeah, if Darth Mentor here, he could uh. stop my rage. Trust me, with Wardrick the Strong here, we'll be untouchable. Yeah, it was Darth Winter. Uh, he's not gonna be able to make it. So, uh, what'd you make again? Uh, do you have time to reroll? Nope, Kerrigan has passed. Now is the time for the good children to cross over. Um, I'm a strong glaive that howls at the moon? Numenera is set a billion years in the future. Eight grand civilizations rose and fell, each leaving its mark on the world. What we might charitably call humanity now shares its home with aliens, mutants, and abhumans left behind by the ancients. At first glance, the setting apes a number of fantasy tropes, with adventurers delving into ancient ruins and doing battle with terrible monsters. But the similarities are only skin deep. When a sage hurls flame or lightning, it's through the use of nanotechnology or psionic power rather than true magic. A warrior might wield a magic sword recovered from the ruins, but it's synthetic diamond with a monomolecular edge instead of star metal quenched in the blood of a swack iron dragon and polished with the chest hair of a god. The contrivances of civilizations persist, following programming instilled in them millions of years ago. Even the air is alive with nanomachine swarms that warp and mutate things that they touch, a phenomenon known as the Iron Wind. It's a world of wonders and horrors, of cinematic over-the-top adventure and mystery. Few really understand the many artifacts that litter the world's secret places, but those who do unlock amazing power. Welcome to the Ninth World. As you approach the village, you're met by a small entourage of people, the foremost being an elderly man with wide eyes and strange tattoos all over his body. He greets you and gestures one hand over his heart, saying, The moon wanes, but hearts wax full. Be known fondly. I waste him with my crossbow. What? You heard me, Dice Munch. Uh, why? Why do you think? Walking towards us all uninvited, waving his hands around, talking cryptic bullshit. I know an attack when I see one coming. He was a village elder coming to greet you. Why would you think that's an attack? I get it. He's trying to cast a spell on us. I almost fell for it. Good thinking, Nuklar. No. He was trying to greet you. He had a plot hook about the mountains to the east. And now he's dead. And now his guards are attacking you. Hey, I'll call shenanigans. You didn't say anything about warriors. I said he had an entourage, and then Itchy McTrigger over here decided to waste their wise man before I could elaborate. He said entourage. I've seen that show. They're wimps. Oh, shut up. <laughs> You're under attack. Fireball coming online. As they charge towards you, they yell for reinforcements. As far as you can tell, the entire town is coming out. We can't take that many. Let's retreat. I'm thinking the mountains to the east. Gosh, who could have seen that coming? As you flee, you see a structure off in the distance. See? I knew those mountains looked quest-worthy. Hey, let's hide in there. Seems like a good place to lose the ambush 
that our killer GM baited us into. Shut up. You flee deeper into the structure. It looks like it once may have been a research facility, but now is more akin to a tomb. I used my skill in Numenera. Can I figure out how any of this equipment works? Yes. The machine spins to life, tearing apart the fabric of the world, revealing a portal to the moon. Close the gate! Close the gate! I smash the gate with a fireball so they can't follow us. As you and Nuklar celebrate, you hear a gurgling growl behind you. You turn to see Wardrick transforming into a werewolf as Spittle slathers down over his angry crook Foul! Bags. Foul! You said the moon was waning. I did. But now you're on the moon, so... Oh god, it's always a full moon on the moon! Open the gate! Open the gate! Well, he didn't buy a rebreather. Can't we just wait for him to suffocate? <laughs> no, he's a werewolf. So? Is asphyxiation... silver? We've got to make it to the dark side of the moon. Once again, you flee to the east, but this time, with Wargic hot on your heels, swinging around his big-ass sword and howling it, eh, well, <laughs> the ground. Numenera introduces the Cypher system, a rules light engine designed for streamlined play. It exclusively uses a d20 rolled high to resolve tasks. Each task is assigned a difficulty number of 1 through 10. Each level is a unit of 3, and the higher the difficulty, the higher the target number. In addition, a player may opt to spend effort on a task, temporarily sacrificing points in an attribute for immediate success. Because damage is sustained to attributes as well, rather than to nebulous hit points, a character's ability diminishes rapidly with injuries and exertion. Uniquely, only player characters ever roll dice in Numenera. The Game Master never has to touch one. Character generation is deceptively simple, with each character assigned a descriptor, a type, and a focus. These traits describe the character's role and abilities with the adjective noun that verbs formula. Examples include a graceful glaive who fuses flesh and steel, an intelligent nano who focuses mind over matter, or a chivalrous barista who enjoys opera. We might possibly have made up one of those. Regardless, there are a lot of possible character combinations that you can make and customize in only a few minutes. Somehow, you make it to the dark side of the moon. Um, Orgic, you transform back into your old self, but you are exhausted. Great! And now we're trapped on the moon. How is it different in the Ninth World? Well, it's been terraformed sometime in the past billion years, so Wardrick the Strong doesn't need to change his name to Wardrick the Smothered. Other than that, you see the lights of the city off in the distance. Killer! We head that way! Alright, well, it's a long walk, but eventually you come to a grand gate. The architecture is nothing like you ever, you've ever seen, because this city is ancient. Gothic houses stretch across the breadth of the street hugging the cobblestone. Wrought iron fences circle the yards. Buildings sag under steep gables and gambles. Curious. This sounds more like the year 1900 than a billion. Are there any citizens? Everywhere you look, you see large cats looking at you. They look about like your average house cat, but each one stands about two foot at the shoulder. I'll offer some meow mix in exchange for directions to a rocket ship. The cat hops onto a low eave so that he may look down on you as he speaks to you. Hello there! Welcome to Otha! Rare we get travelers from down below. Lucky you got here without encountering any star merchants or gugs. Okay, we get it. This town's a podunk. I asked for directions, not your life story. Not much use for a rocket smith hereabouts. But if you follow Gramercy Street to town center, you'll find a tower. Old man Carter might have I something I waste him with my mouth filled with great sword. What? I need to eat to get rid of my exhaustion penalties. Besides, I'm like part dog or something. I imagine there's some sort of racial enmity. Or something! Do you have any idea what you've just done? ruh -ro. The streets are now swarming. If there is one thing that'll get you killed on Ulthar, it's killing a cat. Well, here we go again. Really? Oh, come on. How often do you get to say it? <sighs> well, what can you do? We run like hell for the center of town. This is a game that is clearly trying to push the envelope, to do something different, and there are a lot of legitimately innovative ideas on display here. I'm especially impressed at how far out of its way the game goes to emphasize connections between party members. Each type and focus defines a way in which the character is linked to another character. It really takes away a lot of those awkward, you meet at the tavern kind of scenarios. I notice your group has no wizard. You seem trustworthy. Would you care to join us in our noble quest? 
It could have used a bit more detail in some places, especially the skill system. I'll agree that there's some interesting design philosophy at work here, but skill selection is way too stingy. It almost feels like the combat skills and regular skills used to be the same, were separated, and that the rarity wasn't adjusted. It doesn't feel like most characters know how to do very much. It does keep it simple, though. I had a handle on how the game works minutes after picking up the book, but there's a lot to explore in Numenera. Its highly stylized setting is rife with possibilities and full of just the right kind of weirdness. I love Numenera's setting. It really simulates late 70s gonzo sci-fi, and I wholly respect the decision to make a world that isn't influenced by our own customs and morals. Numenera is an impressive piece of work, and it receives a solid recommendation for Roleplay Roulette. It's well worth the money, and well worth the time. Don't forget to click like, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching our video! That's We're so, so glad to have here. you here! Rest if you me. wanna see this game, there's gonna be links in the description below. Help. There's also a thing somewhere around here where you can click Help. on the other videos! Oh my god, shut up. Shut him up.